So finally, we're now at part three. We're gonna be finishing off our epic cinematic animation in Blender 4.0. If you haven't already seen part one and two where we get to this point over here, make sure to watch it. But now we're gonna finish off by doing some cool compositing and just really bringing this all together as a final animation. I'll even show you how to composite it all together towards the end. So how do we put all like the, the sequences together as a final video that we can um, share with people. So let's jump in to part three. So now that we're wrapping things up in part three, let's start by selecting our little sprite thing over here. And let's add a little bit of rotation to it. So at the moment it's doing this sort of flickering, but let's come to something like frame one and let's go I and insert a rotation. And then let's go to the last frame and then let's just, um, yeah, in fact, we just need a keyframe for the rotation on frame one. So let's come to the drop down here and let's just give it um, the graph editor here. And let's just quickly go over to the sphere under the animation and come to the drop down here. Let's just come to the X rotation, click on it so it's active. Then come here to the modifiers, add modifier and let's add noise. And now it should be rotating, but let's come here to the scale and make it something like 23. And let's also come here to the strength and bump that up so it's a lot stronger. And now, as you can see, this is looking really, really cool. Okay, so let's um, go back into our timeline over here. And um, if you wanted to, you could also just enable auto king and then you can kind of randomly position as higher and lower over time. Like so, completely up to you. Um, something like this, right? So now if we go to frame one, we hit the space bar. Um, you can see it's looking a lot more interesting like that. Okay, that's looking really cool. And let's just quickly grab our ground and let's just go to our properties. Let's just go to the biome reader. And you can see of our forest here, let's just click on the mossy rock and go down to those, um, to the scale here. I'm gonna take the scale down to 0.5, make it a bit smaller. And if any of these stones are in the wrong place, like under the foot of the elephant or whatever, you can come here to the randomize and mess around with stuff like that just to change where it is. And you can also randomize the seed by clicking on here a few times and um, till you kind of get it where you were, but I'm kind of happy with the way this is at the moment. So we want to add a glowing effect to this sphere over here. So let's select it. Let's go over to the material and it's that light material. And let's go over, in fact, we need to go over to our view layer first. We need to go to our passes and we need to enable the material index. Then go to the material property for this light that we created and let's go to the settings. And let's go to the pass index and bump it up to a value of one. And now if we were to um, go and go render and give this a test render, we can see it's now done rendering, but we don't have a glow on this orb here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close this render window and then we're gonna go to our compositing. Let's click on use nodes and let's go shift a search and get a view node. And let's plug the image into here. And if you hold and shift, if you just hold and shift and you right click, you can drag and cut these two cables together and you can press V to zoom out. And then we're gonna go to the index material here. Just click and drag on it and then let go and then type in ID space mask and then go here to ID mask ID value and then take the index here and bump it up to one. Cause remember we gave that material a index of one under the settings. And then we're gonna go shift a search and get a mix. And let's get a color, mix color. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the original image and we're gonna plug it into the bottom. And then we need to take this alpha from the index and use that for the factor. And now if we take this output and plug it into the composite and the viewer, you can see we've isolated this, but let's take the image here and make it black. Okay, so now you can see we've isolated that we have a mask now of this material over here. So now what we can do is we can grab this mix here, go shift D to duplicate, place it on this cable here. And then let's feed the original image into the top socket and this one here into the bottom socket. And let's come over here and change it to add. Okay, so now we've isolated this glow effect over here. All we need to do now is come over here next to the mix and go shift a search and get a glare node and let's place it over here and let's change it to fog glow 
Let's bring the threshold way down here to make it as bright as possible. And let's see if we can increase the size. I think it goes up to nine. And anyway, you can now see we have this nice glowing happening here, which is really cool. So now let's come here to the last two nodes. Let's move them up. Let's go shift a search. And right after this add node here, we're going to go ahead and type in lens and just get a lens distortion node, place it on here. And let's give this a value of 0.01 under the distortion. And under the dispersion, we're going to give that a value of 0.01. And now it's kind of pulled away from the sides a little bit. But if you click here on fit, it'll fit that distortion to the frame. And you can up that amount. But if you can see here, it's now created this really cool kind of distortion towards the ends. And it just adds a little bit more realism to this sort of image here. So yeah, that's looking pretty cool. Let's go back into our layout. Let's go over to our render settings. Let's go down to our motion blur, enable that so we get some motion blur with the movement of the elephant's ears. And now we have a completed animation. Make sure to save. So how do we render this out as an animation? Well, what are you gonna do? You're gonna find somewhere in your computer and you're gonna just create a folder. And then you're gonna call that whatever you want. I like to call it SEQ, which is just for the sequence. So it's just how I prefer to name something. So it's just wherever you're gonna send things to. Um, you can name it whatever you want. So then you're gonna go back to your file where we've been working. And then you're gonna to go to your output properties. You're gonna to go to the output file and then select that file that you created. So in this case, it's for me, it's this one called sequence. So I'm gonna click on it and go accept. And then you're just going to leave it at the default file format for PNG. Now you could render this out directly as a, as a um, video, but I don't recommend that with something like this. It's going to take a long time to render because if something crashes, you're going to lose everything. So in this case, I'd really recommend you do image sequences and then composite them together. So go ahead now, go render and then render animation. And it'll slowly start rendering this frame for frame into our selected folder. Now this could take a few hours or a few days, it really depends on your computer. But for me, I've already done that. So I'm gonna skip that part. But when you guys have already done that, come back to this and then I'll show you how to composite this together inside of Blender. So here is all of my rendered frames, as you can see. They've all rendered out into this file here. And what you wanna do is you wanna open up a fresh scene in Blender 4.0. And then you wanna look at the amount of frames that we have, rendered frames. In this case, we had 270. So we wanna come into this new scene and change the end frame value to 270. We also wanna to go to our output and we wanna match the resolution. In this case, it's 1920 by 900. And you can confirm that by clicking on one, right clicking on one of your sequences and going to your properties. And then under the detail, you can confirm that that is it. Now in this case, with the tutorial, we did 900, but in my original, I did 950. So for me, I'm going to match it to 950. But for you guys, you can do whatever um, you set it to. Okay, so once you have that done, you can come down here to the output and then select, for example, your desktop. Then you can change the file format to FFmpeg video. Go to your encoding and then under the container, make it MP4 up here. And then what you need to do is go over here to this little plus, go to your video editing and then go to um, video editing. Now over here, you're gonna go add, image sequence, and then let's go to wherever that is. In my case, it's on my desktop, in the sequence file, and you're gonna press A to select everything, and then go add image strip. And then once you have these sequences in, all you have to do is go here to render, and then render animation. And now it's just gonna compile all of these together into an MP4. And now I'm gonna to go to my desktop, and here you can see we have the rendered out video. So that is it guys. I really hope you have enjoyed this cinematic animation tutorial. Um, if you've liked it, definitely give a like, subscribe, check out some of my other content, and I'll see you guys next time.